Welcome, John, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Ascend the Dead, this new album, even full of the apocalypse, and more to relating to the metal world. No, we are starting, I think, with a common question to all the interviews that you did until the moment, or perhaps later. So why the band lay six years to release a new album? Because it's very, it's, it's very, now it's very, it's very, it's very difficult to know that um, a powerful band, that a lot of, a lot of context, a lot of a live review, bueno, live live video shots etc the band delay six years very is very weird um well i don't know we don't really like we don't, I don't really believe in like forcing material out just to like get it out quicker kind of thing so um you know basically like you know i, I could pick up my guitar like right now and write, write an album but you know i could write an album in like an hour or two but you know it's just like it wouldn't really be like up to like my standard or our standard so you know we like to like we like to really take our time just to make sure that it's like all the it's like the best like way that it could be you know and we probably trashed like two or three entire other albums worth of stuff just to like you know be able to get this you know as good as it could be and you know we had a lot of we had a lot of time during like COVID and stuff, during lockdowns and stuff like that. So um, we're as happy with it as it could be. I mean, at least for me and our perspective, it was worth it was worth the wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, uh, I remember when I hear for the first time Ascend and Death, uh, it, it 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 wasn't in the 2017. But a friend from the from uh, from Spain told me a, a lot of times, please listen. Ascend and Death is a great band from US, etc. Et then a few years, then a few years back, I hear here's this album now, this new album, and I don't know a lot of change because the first album is more stronger than metal in the old ways, this kind of aspect. But this new album, even full of the apocalypse, is more abstract, it's more savage. I I didn't note a lot of if I, correct me if I wrong, I didn't note a lot of a lot of South American roots because the South America is very, very savage very chacal, like the many people say these kind of words. So, so for you, what is the biggest difference that exists uh, already from the first album to this new one? Um, well, the biggest one for us was, I just, I feel like the first album was pretty like one dimensional as far as like the writing and how it's played, you know, everything is just based on like how to be as fast and heavy as possible kind of thing, you know? Uh, whereas the new one, we kind of like, it's got like more variety and I feel like we, in a lot of ways we went back to like some of our more old school roots, you know, like around the time of the first album, you know, I was listening to a lot of like really heavy, like noisy kind of shit, you know, like Diocletian or like, you know, Nelt Road or Black Witchery kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, if, I don't know if you heard like our first demo and EP, for example, there's like, it's a lot more old school, a lot more like possessed venom necrovore hellhammer kind of influence so i feel like we kind of went back to that a lot more like guitar riff riff driven songs whereas the first album was very much more like you know just play as fast as heavy as possible so a lot of the tempos are very on that first record are very like you know a lot of four blasts and three blasts whereas this one it's kind of like you know a lot of the songs were more written like you know just around like the riff kind of you know, so there's, as such, there's a lot more, like, variety in that way. So, uh, that's kind of, that's one of them, but, um, I don't know, it's, there's just, it's just a wider range of, like, stuff that's being portrayed there, like, emotionally and everything else, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, but I compared it to the first, for, for me, compared to the Disney one to the old one, I did not a lot of technical stuff there, but obviously a lot of review. I think the a lot of reviewers will put this to this new album technical than metal. For me, it's more that than metal, more more brutal than metal in some ways. In some ways, but a curious thing about the or talking about other aspects, in, especially from the lineup, is that the old members are are very busy with a lot of bands. He he has is with a lot Lord Gore, Little Necromancy, where God. Um, you are with a lot of bands. CK is a lot with a lot with the old band. So how do you manage with the 
this line this line up because all people are in your band are very busy with all projects uh, obviously the the normal job every day and perhaps all all, all of all some of them had their they has family so etc so i think it's a very busy people doing this kind of music yeah yeah it's you know it's been kind of like you know that's kind of one of the things that we've had to you know navigate as far as like you know just our other bands our other jobs and all that kind of stuff but uh i don't know and and you know and you know i used to say that you know we don't we don't co we don't compromise you know the music we compromise our personal lives to support the music but over time it's kind of like you know at the same time you don't want to like you know you don't want to see the, the music as a chore either you know that we see the music as you know kind of a a way to like you know it, it's it's therapeutic from like all the shit that life gives us kind of thing you know and at least for me like you know this is this is my like main band you know this is what i mostly like write for and you know yeah i mean i, I guess that's kind of why i guess that kind of relates to your previous question is why it took six years to to do a new album you know right? so oh okay okay other aspect that I didn't know a lot in this new album is the music in general. So how do you define the music? As I said, I think many musicians will say that this album will be a technical death metal. For me, it's more brutal, more death metal in a brutal way. But for you, what kind of label or style do you put for your music now? Because it's very different from the first one. Um, I would just call it death metal. I mean, you know, the beauty of death metal is that, you know, it can be so many different things, you know, death metal can be like, you know, possessed, or it can be like, you know, cryptopsy, or it can be like, you know, origin or some shit like that, you know, like, I mean, I don't, I don't like, I don't like origin or anything like that, you know, that's not really my kind of shit that I like, but, you know, death metal can be so many different things so but but i mean like what it started out as at least for me was you know stuff like possessed or early like death or morbid angel or necro horror kind of stuff so like you know i mean like that's that's what we're the most influenced by so like we take that like first generation kind of style and just kind of like you know our at least in my view our brand of it is just taking that and moving forward from mostly that but i mean we have a lot of other influences as far as newer death metal and even like classic traditional heavy metal like black sabbath or judas priest or venom or something you know mm -hmm. so okay. I, I would just i would just call it death metal you know okay 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 so other aspect that i didn't know from this need from the first to this new one is that the change of the label because the first one was released through dark descent records and now you are uh, 20 bucks spin record so why do you decide to change the label and um, perhaps well perhaps you continue with bait 20 bank 20 bucks spin for many years because it's a great label too right um I, it's it's difficult it, it'd probably be difficult for me to say all the all the super specific details that like went into all the stuff that you know goes on within the band and the label and stuff like that but, um, you know, we had been kind of, you know, I mean, we, we never really like up until up until right now, at least we've never really like signed a contract binding us to any particular label or anything like that. So we kind of just approach it as far, you know, just one release at a time kind of thing. Um, as far as, uh, you know. I mean, I like I said, I don't want to I don't want to like say too much because I mean we're still kind of we're we're still working with dark descent and invictus on the first record and you know we don't have to you know you know we're, we're still pretty like amicable with them but like the the 20 bucks spin deal it just it just made so much sense for us as far as like what they're able to do for the band and their budget and i mean it's not even so much that they're the current big like label in in like underground death metal right now but I mean, just like what they're what they're able to do for like the band and what they're able to how much they're able to support us and everything else. And 
you know, it, it just made too much sense. And Dave, Dave's been really, really pleasant to work with. And um, another big reason was uh, also, I actually heard that he, uh, I actually heard that he wanted to, he wanted us for the first album all those years ago. But I mean, we were a new band at the time. And he was also like a kind of a new label at the time. So I don't know why. I don't know why we didn't follow through with that, but you know, but I found, once I found that out, it just it just made so much sense because it just made me think like, oh, you know, it made us think, you know, he's he's wanted us since back in back in the day, you know, yeah. So he's been he's been kind of down with it since the early days. So at that point, it just it just made too much sense. So you know, I'm I'm you know, so far so far so good. I mean, album's not out yet, but you know, I mean, we'll see how things go, but. You know, right now, right now we're very happy working with Twenty Bucks Spin. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, uh, Kira, uh, one of one one of the questions that I all ask about uh, when I when I do interviews about the composition process from the new album because usually the the albums from two thousand twenty to two thousand twenty two was composed and written during the pandemic, but but in your case, delayed six years. So perhaps the album was composed uh, the bueno. The next to the 2017, 2018 or 19, perhaps you start the composition, or perhaps you take the time to do a lot of a lot of a lot of free time before the pandemic and created this new monster called even fall of the apocalypse. Yeah, um, I'd say like right around 20, I mean, right around the time of the first record, you know, little ideas and stuff started coming together. Um 2018, I think, was when we wrote the songs uh, Nexus of the Black Flame and Bestial Vengeance. And we wrote another song that didn't make it onto the album. And we wrote those songs uh, during the one year, 2018, that we had Kelly from the band Onyx Modem. He was our guitar player that year. Uh, so that was kind of like that was kind of like when the first like jam sessions for for new material for the eventual second album started happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, it was, you know, I, it was kind of hard to really write too much, you know, just because of our busy lives and schedules. But COVID, uh, you know, that that little two year shutdown really helped because it was just like, you know, we were able to write so much just to, you know, without outside distractions, you know, kind of like how it was back in the day when, you know, we didn't really have a lot of as much responsibilities and other bands and stuff as we do now. So we were able to get a lot done during that time. And um, I was able to, we were able to get a lot of musical input from our guitar player, Ian, coming back to the band. Um, he was, you know, one of the founding members. He played on the first record too, and the old demo and EP. Um, Kevin, uh from uh you know our bass player blasphemy ritual necromancy whatever got a good amount of input from him so it you know it really helped a lot um i'd say like late 21 early 22 is when things really started to take hold on like side b and stuff like that i think 20 21 was when we play we played a show in los angeles around that time and i believe that that was when we played we were able to we played all of side a of the record at that show so yeah i guess that's i guess that's kind of that's kind of a loose chronology i kind of bounced back and forth been a lot of stuff there but you know yeah that's that's how it's that's how it's been just slow slow and gradual i guess mm -hmm. okay okay or one uh, talking about a little from the past from the one from the ascendant death life presentation Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you will you was present in or you was present in one of the cartels of the total death over the Mexico, I think two two years ago, perhaps two years ago. But uh but now when I try to find some food one well, no, some food videos or live videos from YouTube page, I didn't found I didn't found a lot about I didn't found new bit of new videos from Ascendant. So the band is the band presents at that time in total over over the, the Mexico, or perhaps you canceled your presentation. Uh the only total death that we played was in uh we played it in 2018. It was the first one, the one where Dead Congregation headlined. Um 
I think we were in talks to play it again in uh, some of the more recent iterations, but it didn't end up happening just because of like logistics and stuff like that. I think one of the, I think one of them, uh, I think one of them got canceled because of COVID. I think one of them got like, he just canceled the entire, I think it was the most recent one, the one that was supposed to happen uh, last year, I think. Or this year, oh, the one that's supposed to be happening right now. Yeah, that whole that whole one got canceled, and now it's like rebooked for next year. So, you know, that's yeah, that's that. Okay, and how was your experience to play for the first time in Mexico with Ascendant Dead at 2018? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of tacos and you know, <laughs> tortas and I don't know drank some whiskey and got to hang out with all the guys from evil priest and a Thomas side and, you know, dead congregation. They were, they were awesome. Um, I remember the sound at that show being kind of muddy sounding, you know, like, uh, but it kind of just, it just added to the atmosphere of the, of the whole gig. And I remember uh, rehearsing beforehand, like we had a, re we had a rehearsal the day before the show and it was just like us and all the dudes from Atomicide were there. And I think some of, some of the other bands were there and it was, you know, we were just partying and drinking beer and just having a good time. It was, it was a lot of fun. Okay. 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 Now, well, one of the other, other aspects about the album from Ascendant Dead is the cover art because all the cover art was did for, for Kyle Bowen. Now the first one and the second one. So, but why are you trying to say in the book cover us? Because it's like some, uh, also like a different dimension with a, a monsters there. <laughs> it's very complicated to understand what happened directly into the cover art. So, how can you define the music related to the cover art? Well, the front cover is kind of uh, how should I say this? Uh, it'll be hard to say this without revealing too much, but. Um, it's basically like the title of the of the album and of the track Evan Fall of the Apocalypse and the cover art are all kind of related. It's based on a, it's based on a dream that I had a long time ago. And, you know, again, I don't want to I don't want to reveal too much, but, you know, um, basically, like it's it's kind of like it's the kind of thing where if, if you look closely at it, you know, it's, you look at like the general, like kind of shape of it, it's kind of like, it's supposed to kind of look like this in a dead sigil. Like, I'm not sure if you've, uh, you've seen like the sigil that we have on like all the releases in our shirts where it's like, it's like the inverted cross with the like the little skull and all the flesh and shit coming out of it. You know, um, it's kind of like reality, you know, finally bending into the shape of it, into the shape of that, you know, for this, whole event that's happening and you know again i don't i don't want to you know reveal too much about it but yeah that's and also it also is kind of influenced somewhat by the possessed record beyond the gates where it's like you know if you look really closely at it the more you look at it the more that you kind of you know when you first see it you just see this big general kind of shape but then you look you stare at it for a little while and you start to notice all this little stuff that pops out you know the more that you look at it kind of so yeah okay. that's okay so oh, that what sense. are the future plans now that the band has for this new album even for the apocalypse perhaps you will prepare a extensive tour in in us perhaps in europe or who knows uh a, a, a full tour here in latin america or more videos uh, well, right now we're uh, we have a West Coast tour uh, planned with the Irish band Crossgrad. We have a Europe tour planned with uh, Deteriorat, and we have uh, plans for a full USA tour in the fall. Um, you know, we're still hammering out the details on that. Um, Latin America, uh, yeah, uh, we have we haven't nothing planned there yet but you know we'd like we'd like to hit it you know just if, if things logistically line up but yeah we hope to we hope to tour a lot for this new record okay okay well talking about now from all the kind of aspects what is your opinion about uh, about what comment that um, that chris barnes said last said, said last year the old new death metal bands are shit or 
not like the first wave of death metal bands around the world. They, he thinks like he thinks like that. So, what's your opinion about this? This this one well, this is statement of Chris Barnes from X. Well, now six feet under X Cannibal Corpse. I mean, I mean, he hasn't really done a whole lot that was any good in my opinion since Cannibal Corpse. So, but I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't care. Like we're we're doing we're we're doing what we want to do, you know. And luckily, there's enough of a crowd for it now to where we're able to, you know, play performances and you know, to where we're able to perform in front of you know people all you know around the country and you know in other parts of the world and stuff like that. And so, you know, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> mm. Okay, other aspect that I don't know into the now the, of the media is that now a lot of a lot of American media are promoting the new bands into the dead metal, especially like bands like two hundred stuff wounds and dead uh, Sangi a lot of bands. But for me, it's curious because these bands on these bands are more like well, like the Frozen Soul too. They are like the the same vein of the old dead metal school. But if we compare with the music from Ascendant Dead, Ascendant Dead is more savage, as I said, more chaotic way to to do that metal. So, what do you think? What do you think about the media are more focused into the old stuff, and not like the experimenting ways that the Ascendant Dead do in this in this kind of records, even Fall of the Apocalypse? Well, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, like I haven't really heard any of those bands before, so like I don't really. I don't really know like what they sound like or anything, um, but I mean, in some ways though, it's like you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't know what they're like, what the intention behind like the music is. Like if like I mean, I don't know, like you know, for example, if I could, I could start like a side band right now, and we all play like with HM2 pedals, and we wear fucking blue jeans, and you know you know, we just play some, like, chunky, you know, thrash beat, slow autopsy worship, and, you know, it just gets blown up, and, you know, it gets picked up by a big label or whatever kind of thing, you know, but, I mean, it's not really, uh, I don't know, we're, we're making music that, like, we want to hear, and, you know, if it, if it gets the support from, like, big labels, whatever, that's great, but, you know, if not, then, you know, it doesn't really matter. At the time we started the band, we didn't, you know, there wasn't really like any of this stuff going, you know, going on. There wasn't like, you know, that much of a scene like throughout the world, at least not compared to now. But, you know, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> other, other, well, I remember when I spoke with, a, a, a what, a two years ago during the pandemic with the guitars from the Tom Mold. And he told me that the well, now the dead metal in in the old way are too saturated with a lot of bands, with a lot of productions, albums. You know, are you like thanks to the Spotify, the Tidal, or what the, the, the digital platforms? We can see a lot of music now each day: singles, videos, albums, EPs. It's very difficult to get attention from the people. So for you. Uh, for you in with your music but because I, I I speak with about your music because your music is not easy to understand at the first word you need to spin a lot of times because this is this is a great record but need to hear more so in 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 a, in, in an industry that are more attention in the singles so for you what is the concept now the album has when singles are more related to the promote the album? um i don't know i mean you know we don't we didn't really like we didn't really write at the write any of the songs or anything with like a single in mind you know every you know everything about it was written to you know create this whole big thing that was the record so you know if somebody wants to find a single to take out and put in which i think that's i think that's what ended up happening with like on godly death or inverted ascension for example you know, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, John, the sad times arrived at this interview. 
I hope you enjoy these ones like me. You are terrific guy. As I said, your first, your second album is amazing one. We did a Please. review. We did a review and and we put a perfect score, nine point eight over ten. So it's like ten ten. <laughs> It's a great record for me. And that's all. Perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalinum followers? Um, we hope to get down there soon. That's that's all I've got to say there. We really want to get down there. The crowd I mean, you know, I've I've always seen like footage and stuff of shows, you know, down in down there and it always looks like really awesome. You know, huge crowds, you know, and we're all about that, you know, we're all about that kind of shit. So hopefully we'll get down there soon. 